In central Pennsylvania, with its small towns and local stores, there sits a three-mile-long island, home to one of the country's most notorious nuclear power plants, ready to be fired up again, this time to support the AI boom. It was here in March 1979 that reactor number two had a partial meltdown after several errors in design and operation led to a perfect storm. That cleanup process requires releasing some radioactive gas. And that has scared a lot of people who live nearby. Number two never ran again. Decommissioned in multiple studies by universities and government regulators found that the radiation released from the accident was one sixth of a chest X-ray and impacts were, quote, negligible. Even as reactor number one, this power plant kept going until 2019 when cheaper sources of energy forced its closure. Now, rising from the banks of the Susquehanna River, it's time to power the good reactor back up. 1979 taught the industry so many things. It cultivated the standards. It, uh, it, it created the training programs. You can't change the page on what happened in 1979, mm -hmm. but we actually change the page on how we operate plants for the last 30 plus years now since that accident. Brian Hansen oversees over 100 power plants for Constellation Energy. I take a lot of calls at midnight. Including its nuclear reactors. We operate 21, but the 21 reactors operating at the highest levels of reliability. He believes Three Mile Island, now called Crane Clean Energy Center, is needed for a new challenge. Data centers across the country are trying to plug into nuclear plants just like this one, driving new technology like AI and cryptocurrency. How big is the demand? Cutting edge artificial intelligence chips consume up to 14,300 watts of power each in rack after rack of machines, each chip using enough electricity to charge 715 iPhones at once or almost 18 high-end refrigerators, one data center can equal 43,000 homes. I think it, you know, it's, it's fascinating times. You know, I think the grid for 100 years has satisfied the needs of any economy. For the first time, I think the market's starting to signal like this, this could be big. This could be a lot of load growth. Gigawatt-sized data centers, which would take the full output of a plant like this uh, to power you know, AI. It's part of a nationwide nuclear renaissance from California to Michigan to PA. Plants being restarted or having their licenses extended to meet the carbon neutral demand from Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, and others competing to develop life changing technology, they say. You think about national security, national uh, economy, you think about medical advances, so many things about the power of AI that's going to provide us. What do you think in a new administration uh, nuclear looks like from a standpoint of public support? Our politicians don't agree on much. But they seem to agree that nuclear energy is a necessary resource, an important resource for our grid and our nation's uh, ind energy independence. NBC News getting exclusive access to reactor number one with its massive turbine and generator, which makes the electricity. The control room getting prepped to get back online, the massive cooling towers. First off, I walk the plant top to bottom. I'm 37 mm -hmm. years in this industry. I told our CEO, I think we can do it. And so I've, I've, I know the condition of the plant. We've gone out and done inspections. It's in great shape. I'm looking at these controls, actual real physical switches, and I'm thinking, this doesn't feel very 2024. This feels very 1960s when this plant was built. Um, is this something that your operators like, or are you guys going to strip all this stuff out and it's going to be flat screens and keyboards here? When soon? we restart the plan, it'll look just like this, back mm -hmm. to the original design basis. And operators, when they reach for a switch and they turn it and they know it's going to send voltage down a copper wire, that's when they're most comfortable. Controls without the Internet, a possible cybersecurity benefit. So they can actually know that I'm not relying on the Internet working here. I'm not relying on some sort of network or wireless signal. Yeah. Literally switch this and something's going to happen at the other end right away. Exactly right, Tom. Okay. Yeah. Nuclear power, once hailed as the future, may finally be powering the future of the AI race. Yeah, what a, what a great story, Tom. But by the way, shout out to Andrew Mitchell, who was on the job 40 <laughs> years ago and is still on the job upstairs right now. Perfect. But listen, if AI continues to grow, this one power plant isn't going to be enough, right? Does the country have the infrastructure it needs to keep up with demand five, 10 years down the line? How much power do, do these AI companies need? 
Well, that's the big question, Tom. So whether you're talking to Microsoft, who's got this power purchasing agreement, they're the ones that went to Constellation Energy, which runs through Mile Island, uh, now the Crane uh, Clean Energy Center. They went to them and said, look, we're going to give you an agreement to buy the power from this plant off of the grid. Whether it's Amazon, who's talking about some new technologies, including smaller reactors that they're hoping to invest in uh, to put next to their data centers, or, or all the other tech companies, their feeling is if you need constant always there, electricity for us without burning fossil fuels, you're going to need nuclear because you're talking about gigawatt size yeah. data centers, Tom. Southern companies, which runs uh, massive amounts of power companies in the southeast, they think that 10 nuclear reactors should be under construction in this country right now. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.